This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey guys, Jay here, welcome to Eons of Battle, and today I have brought out all of my almost armies. You could say, I can't believe they're not battleforged. These are all the armies that I have collected smatterings of, but they have never seen tabletop time. They are not true proper forces. Actually, that is a little bit of a lie. I have played a game of Age of Sigmar with my Stormcast Eternal Thunderstrike. But let's just go through them one by one, what I wanted from them, what I got out of them, and which one will I continue? And which one will I destroy? No, that's not part of it. I'm not getting rid of any of this. Maybe, we'll see. But first up is my Death Guard. I've told the story many a time. One day I got drunk and I painted a Death Guard and I loved it so much that I started a little Death Guard army. Right now I've got one box of Plague Marines, one box of Pox Walkers, I've got whatever this thing is, and I have got a, a, a captain, a sergeant, a lieutenant, a plague, Father, it's not Plague Father. What is this guy? He is a Plague General. He is the leader because you know why he's the leader? Because he's a lot taller than the normal guys. Really, that's what he is. He's the Death Guard tall guy. Ooh, and I also have this, which is a super retro Warhammer Fantasy model. They had a little slug fella, and this I'm using as a Chaos Spawn, which is actually kind of fun because Chaos Spawn are quick, and it's fun to have something fast in a slow moving, disgusting Death Guard army. But this army I absolutely love. The way I paint it is almost in a weird tie-dye using greens and yellows and oranges. But this is by far my best painted army. Out of all of my forces, these guys are the best. And one, this army is definitely gonna be completed. And one day it will be an absolute glorious, disgusting pile of Nurgle. The next thing on the chalking block is to actually finish this Plague Crawler this little three treaded vehicle. I really like the really like how these look. It's a little bit. This is a uh, easy to build push fit model. And so I think I'm going to pick two more of these up and then maybe I will get a battle force because that'll give me plenty of pox Waffer, walkers, typhus and um, I think a Bi biologus putrefier comes in then that box as well. So yeah, I definitely want to get all of the characters, but this army is wonderful. The reason it is so small is because each model takes forever to paint. I think even a pox walker takes the better part of an hour, but I love this army and it's Death Guard. I don't need that, that many miniatures, so it'll one day grow. But uh, I didn't, I never really sat down and said, I am going to play Death Guard. I just had a couple of Death Guard models laying around and then I thought, well, you know, I really liked painting this guy. I thought they turned out really nice. So why don't I just get a box of pox, or a box of Death Guard Plague Marines? And then I ended up building all those guys and painting all those guys up. And I'm like, well, I'm already most of the way to uh, an actual playable army. So why don't I just get some more things? But please let me know if you have any ideas of what I should pick up next. Actually, I think in addition to two of these Plague Crawlers, I'm definitely going to be getting um, the Blight Lord Terminators. There's two different types of Terminators for the Death Guard. There are the, the Bodyguard Terminators, and then there's, I think those are the Shroud Terminators. So I want to get the other Terminators. And you know what, maybe I need both. I do love Terminators, which will lead right into my Grey Knight army. This army I have had for years and years. Uh, I had been collecting 40k armies. I collected all my Black Templar, I had collected all of my Necrons, a little bit of Gene Stealer cult on the side. But I, I was thinking, I don't, I'm not in love with any of these armies because they don't feel finished. They don't feel unified, They're, which is very true. My Black Templar and my Necrons and way my Gene Stealers are all like, yeah, I mean, I need to finish the bases on those guys and these guys are a little bit wrong and I kind of changed the color on these and I changed my recipe for the heads. They feel very unfocused and ununified. And so I was like, I want a proper 40K army done. I don't even want any bits in the house. I just want a like a, a carry case, like a Games Workshop carry case with that army in it, ready to rock and roll. And so I thought Grey Knights would be perfect because I don't need that many models and I can spam lots and lots of Terminators, which is what I have done here. I have 20 Terminators in front of me, technically 21 because of Grandmaster Voldus in his Terminator army. I am only going to, do, I'm going to be doing an oops, all Terminators, which is a little bit sad because I really wanted the new Castellan Crow, but he's not in Terminator armor, so he doesn't get to be in the army. And my plan, the reason that this army was going to feel real and finished to me was I was going to collect 
all the models, put them all together, do whatever kit bashing and converting I wanted to do. I'd have the whole army gray and unfinished in front of me, and then I would paint it all in one go. And then it would really be done. Uh, which is actually sort of something I tried with this Age of Sigmar army, but keeping with the Terminators, the things that I would love to add to this army is 10 more Terminators. Right now I have two Paladin squads with the Spear, and then I have two Terminator squads with Falchions. Um, although I will need to get, I might need to get 15 more Terminators because two of the Terminators I turned into the um, guys, the Paladins with the banners, which I love. But since there's no separate model for these, I had to sacrifice two out of the five Terminators from that box to turn them into these guys. So I'll have to get probably 15 more Terminators, which is three boxes. And then I want two Dreadnoughts, two lovely Grey Knight Dreadnoughts, which Forge World used to sell a lovely, lovely Forge World Dreadnought. I mean, d don't tell anybody I said this, but I may have actually looked at those models available from, let's just say a third party seller. You know, maybe somewhere in China, but it's weird that the China has so many uh, old out of production um, Forge World kits. It's really weird, but I'd, I would love to get my hands on some of those Grey Knight Dreadnoughts from Forge World because they just looked the part. And the ra I, I have so many um, plastic Dreadnoughts from Games Workshop that I almost don't want to buy two more and then just paint them silver instead of painting them black for my Black Templars. So I would like the Dreadnoughts for my Terminators to be different. Maybe one option that actually could be really nice is either to use um, Custodes Dreadnoughts or uh, the Contemptor Dreadnoughts. The ones that are much more, um, they look a lot more like anime or Gundam. They're for 30K and they're a little bit more sleek. That actually, that actually could be a really solid option to sleek Contemptor. Although the what I wanted to equip on those Dreadnoughts is uh, LAS Cannons and Missile Launchers, which... If I put on LAS cans and missile launchers, I'm going to lose out on how cool those guys' arms look. They're going to look like a person with just two gun turrets strapped to their shoulders. So maybe I'll have to play around in Photoshop and see what I like. But yeah, I would love to add two, two um, Dreadnoughts and then two Storm Raven gunships. Because uh, even though I don't typically like flyers and I think that the Storm Raven gunship looks like the box the Big Mac comes in, I do like the idea of... Um, having easy ways to move models around the board, especially because it's for Grey Knights, it's all about getting your few number of models where they need to be at a moment's notice. Because if you just set up your Terminators and have them walk five inches a turn, they're not getting anywhere. So yeah, two a uh, bunch more Terminators, two Storm Raven gunships, and two Dreadnoughts potentially in a uh, Cataphracty? No, that's Terminators. In a Contemptor variety. But yeah, I just love Terminators. And I think of the of the Terminators that Games Workshop makes, I think that the Grey Knight Terminators look by far the best. Although I was hoping a little bit that maybe when the Primaris came out a few years ago, I was like, yes, we're going to get some better Terminators. And then we didn't and we kept not getting them. And as of today, we still don't have Primaris Terminators, which is a little bit of a bummer. And don't say that aggressors are the Primaris Terminators. They are not. They're a different unit. Yes, they have heavy armor and some heavy weapons, but they don't have deep striking. They don't have an invulnerable save and their weapon loadouts and their kind of battlefield usage is very different to the good old fashioned Terminator. So yeah, Grey Knights. I actually did paint a Grey Knight. Uh, I painted one of my Grey Knights testing out a color scheme in the video. An AI picked my color scheme and that actually gave me some really nice ideas because I did something completely out of the box, something actually a lot more like my Death Guard, which I've now fallen in love with. So I think if I take that scheme, which is not at all like the classic Games Workshop color schemes, I wonder if I will absolutely adore this army a lot more than if I had done something really close to the box art. It hurts my soul a little bit because I always love things to look like how they are in the universe, but I think that that's the way, to do, the way for me to go, is to do something a little bit weird. And then I won't have to paint so much either non-metallic metal or silver, which I don't particularly love either of those processes, non-metallic metal or true metallic metal. And I always find it difficult to find a balance that I like between, hey, it looks really shiny versus like doing it, having it look really nice with non-metallic metal, but then it takes forever to paint. Yeah, good old the Grey Knights. Sometimes all you need is a little space, a right angled even space, a square space, if you will. 
Whether that square is that perfect image that encapsulates your unique brand hosted on your very own Squarespace website, perfectly rendered and sized using their automatic image scaling, a square to hold your merchandise and display it proudly to the world and your customers housed on a satisfying store page, or maybe you need many squares, like the many award-winning templates Squarespace has to offer that you can choose from to help make your own website look great. Squarespace is the place to be if you find cubes comforting, and their tools make it easy to have that square space you've always wanted. So get out there and make your own square-shaped space using Squarespace, and when you're ready to launch, use our code Eons of Battle to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Good old the Grey Knights. But moving on to an army I have actually played, these are Stormcast Eternals, the Thunderstruck Stormcast Eternals from the Dominion Box, which I still think you can pick up for peanuts. The Dominion Box famously didn't sell well. I actually don't think it didn't sell well, but it didn't do Indominus numbers, and clearly Games Workshop made Indominus numbers of this box. I think at Adepticon, they had an actual pallet of Dominion boxes that they were giving out for people who ordered the most expensive tickets you can get, which came with like a swag bag and some other things. And it came with a box of Dominion. And so literally they were practically giving away a pallet of these boxes. And there's nothing wrong with the box. Everything in it is amazing. You get the Stormcast Eternals and you get the Orc Cruel Boys, the brand new Orc Cruel Boys, which look great. If you want like creepier, scarier Orcs, the Cruel Boys are it. They are great. They're like, they're like something out of a creepy old stop motion movie. They're super disgusting. But I also love the new Stormcast. I've liked the new Stormcast since they came out in Age of Sigmar, but I always kind of held off because they were overly decorated and overly fat. Like they 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 were Space Marines. They were essentially the Age of Sigmar version of Space Marines, but they just looked too built where the new Thunderstrike Stormcasts have been slimmed down dramatically and a lot of those details and embellishments have been removed, which I actually think makes the look a lot stronger. When, you know, you're looking at a model and you're just seeing pecs and abs, like sculpted on pecs and abs, kind of like Roman soldiers and just the armor, I feel like it's a little bit easier to appreciate them than if they do have sculpted pecs and abs, but you can't really see it under a blanket of a tunic and a necklace and charms and gems and dangly bits. Kind of like 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 this Grandmaster Voldus, he's great if, you know, he's the only one who's absolutely covered in decoration because he looks really nice standing alongside the much more kind of bland Terminators. But an entire army of Grandmaster Voluses it's not really the look that appeals to me, but that's why I like the Thunderstrike Stormcast so much because them being slimmed down and a little bit more just normal human beings uh, is just much more appealing to me. And also, uh, speaking of normal human beings, re I read the book Soul Wars, which is an excellent book. If you want to like dip your toes in the Age of Sigmar, the first Age of Sigmar book, Soul Wars, is fantastic. And you kind of get what makes the Stormcast so interesting and so tragic. They're very much the Space Marines, but if, you know, Space Marines were invented 35 years ago, where the Stormcast Eternals were invented, what, four years ago, four or five years ago? And so these guys, um, uh, Sigmar and Nagash are in a constant battle. Nagash wants to take over the world because he loves himself so much, he just thinks he deserves the universe. And Sigmar is just trying to keep everything alive that's currently alive. And so Sigmar is like, Nagash, can you not? And Nagash is like, LOL, bro, I don't know what to tell you. But um, so Sigmar, he's losing. He can't fight the forces of death. And so he, t he takes every badass, every badass who dies in combat, the second their soul is about to leave their body, they're whisked away and turned into and put into a Stormcast Eternal's body. But every time he does that, and it's sort of against the person's will. I mean, these are these are badass human defend like humanity defenders, or not necessarily humanity, because anything can be a Stormcast Eternal. But these guys didn't necessarily opt into being one of Sigmar's soldiers. I mean, they probably would, but it's a little creepy that he kind of takes them against their will. And every time they fall in battle and are re-turned into a Stormcast Eternal they lose a little bit more of their soul, that thing that makes them them. And so there's characters in the book who don't really remember their past or what they're doing. All they know is that they are a Stormcast in a never-ending battle against Nagash's forces of death. And it, it makes them really, really interesting. And what's great is that each one, they number one, there can be women Stormcast Eternals, and there very much are. You know, have fun with that in the comments. But the, these guys, 
they have their own thoughts, opinions, and beliefs and history on things. All space marines are all like, hello, brother, did you enjoy the... I mean, they all live together in either a, a, a chapter keep or on a spaceship, and they they don't have a lot of difference of opinions. I mean, they do in the books because that's how you get, like, conflict and you ha make a book interesting, but it never really makes sense that the Space Marines ever disagree or differ on things very much, especially since they're psycho-indoctrinated to believe everything that the Imperium tells them. Where Stormcasts, sometimes Stormcasts don't like each other because of who they are as people, and that makes them so much more relatable. And you see different people excel at different things just because of who they are as people. And so one thing that's great about the Stormcast Eternals is you do just have folks and fellas working together to try to save Sigmar, the world of, uh, what is the world of Sigmar called? Aish? It's something like that. But yeah, the, the Sigmar, they've got that dark and depressingness to them, but then they also have just that ray of hope and honor and power to them. I think... If the Space Marines were written again today, I think that they would lean a little bit closer to the Stormcast Eternals than they would to uh, what the Space Marines currently are. And I like the Space Marines. Don't get me wrong. I do love a good Space Marine. But this armor was really fun. I painted it in a week. We actually have a video on that where Nick painted up the Orc Cruel Boys and I painted up the Dominion guys. And we played a game of Age of Sigmar and it was really fun. Sigmar, because... Um, I think because of its focus on close combat and um, the base sizes are actually big. These are 40 millimeter bases. I think that um, it just felt better. It played a little bit better. Also, probably because we were playing a little bit of a simpler game without um, a lot of interactions with rules and uh, buffs and power ups. A lot of the things were just what the stats are. Also, the, the Dominion box. If Again, if you have any interest in Age of Sigmar, pick up the Dominion box now while it's super cheap. Uh, unfortunately, if you want to play any of the other beautiful races of Age of Sigmar, you're kind of out of luck. Which, speaking of that, I want to collect all the Age of Sigmar armies. They're so, so gorgeous. I am torn right down the middle between the Caradron Overlords and the Seraphon. The Seraphon, of course, are the Lizard Men. Which, I always wondered, I, I talked to somebody and they said that Seraphon is the new word to describe that army. I always thought that Seraphon was how the Seraphon described themselves, because do the Lizard Men walk around? being like, hey, what are you? And he's like, oh, I'm a lizard man, get it? Because you're a man and I'm you, but a lizard man. It never really made much sense to me, but apparently Seraphon is the new Games Workshop copyrightable name for that army. But both those armies, one of them is a little bit more of a horde army with dinosaurs and lizards and geckos and stuff. And then the other one is a fairly low model count uh, steampunk army. And oh, I mean, I can collect them both. I can do whatever I want. But oh, what am I feeling right this second? I think I'm feeling caradrons. I saw I saw this. I think it might have been on Instagram, but somebody used cotton balls like airbrushed cotton balls to uh, make it look like all of his caradron overlords were just above the clouds. And the lore of the caradron overlords is that they actually mine gold out of essentially clouds out of the sky. And so I thought it would be really cool to take cotton balls and put those on the bases and then just airbrush just a little bit of gold to make it look like the gold that they take from the sky. And I just I love that idea. I also want to try to get um, clear flying stands that aren't Games Workshop's clear flying stands because they suck and clear bases because I think clear bases would also help the look of that just floating vibe. But yeah, that army, that army I would love to collect and put that right alongside this collection of armies that I have that are that are currently nothing. But anyway, getting to my last army, which is Barely anything, but i it's one of those things that I really, really want from Warhammer 40,000 is a Sisters of Battle army. The Adeptus Sororitas, or how I pronounce it, Sororitas, like Margaritas. The Sororitas, these are the best models Games Workshop makes, I think. I love the Sisters of Battle. They're gorgeous. They're beautiful. They are very, very 40k. Grim, gothic, nuns with guns. It's just perfect, the idea of uh, of a military made up of religious, like, figures. I just l absolutely love it. And it also has some of my favorite models in the game, like the Paragon War Suits, which leave a comment about how you feel about the Paragon War Suits. I absolutely adore them. But I know that there's some people out there who might have a slightly different opinion than mine. And I love the uh, Sisters of Battle uh, Repentia. When a sister of battle does something wrong, and it could be, you know, it could be like they don't do a good job in battle or they, you know, they're not able to fulfill their oaths. 
Or it could be, you know, they were just rude at the dinner table one day. They are turned into a repentia, where they are stripped of their armor, and they must fight in the worst of the fighting, armed with nothing but a giant chain sword. My Repentia squad is actually painted up because I use this army in Kill Team, and I love them in Kill Team. Uh, they're not very good. And, but the reason they're not very good actually isn't really down to the rules, it's just down to the unit composition. So a full squad of 10 Battle Sisters, uh, or a full squad of Repentia, 10 Repentia in Kill Team, will kill anything that they can catch. But your opponent is probably going to catch on really quickly that, oh, you don't have any guns, and you don't have any movement shenanigans, so all they have to do is kind of hang back and shoot you, because you will die. <laughs> if your Sisters of Battle are getting shot at, they will die. Although, they do have, essentially, a Feel No Pain. Actually, very similar to the Death Guard. Every time they take a wound, you roll a d6, and on a 5-up, that wound is not taken. So that can actually mean that your Repentia, which are essentially naked ladies with chainsaws, they could just absolutely tank a load of fire, or they can die instantly to nothing. They're, it's a really interesting army. But yeah, I think you actually, in Kill Team, according to the compendium, you can take five Repentias and five Battle Sisters, which I think would actually be a really good mix. You can use your Battle Sisters and their fire to help give your Repentia a little bit of cover as they make their way up the board. But I really like just all Repentia. And every now and then, you know, you get into a situation with terrain where it's not the end of the world that you don't have guns and you can just sneak your way up the board. Um, I don't know if I've ever actually won with the Repentia, but there's I feel like there has been a couple of times where I didn't epically lose. So I like these gals. And again, beautiful, beautiful miniatures. My dream for this army is I want it to be that the Sisters of Battle are defending a, a shrine world that is all about books. I want these essentially to be an army of librarians. And so I want to take that idea, maybe on my Paragon War suits, I can create like literally a bookshelf to go on their shoulders. And I would love to have like just little books strewn about the bases. Ooh, and the floating pulpit. I mean, the pulpit would be a perfect spot for tons and tons of books to be piled up. I think that that would just be a lovely, a lovely thematic idea for these Sisters of Battle. Ah, ooh, and the Sisters of Battle Rhinos. I mean, you get some bookshelves on there. Ah, are there any good librarian jokes I can have? Like maybe under one of the script scroll works, like in that beautiful gothic lettering, I can put like, please be quiet. <laughs> some, some, just some fun little Easter eggs hidden throughout the army. But yeah, I would love a Sisters of Battle army. I think the Grey Knights are probably next on the chopping block because I don't need that much more stuff and they're already like assembled and put together, whereas I only have one squad of headless battle sisters. So it would be much easier to actually complete my Grey Knight army, but I really like the Sisters of Battle and one day I will have that army. Actually, the Sisters of Battle would fight very well alongside the Grey Knights, but those are my four almost armies. They're not done. I don't know if they're going to get done anytime soon. I also enjoy collecting and building and painting for my actual armies that I have completed and are playable, but maybe these are just my pipe dreams. Just the little things every now and then, like, ah, eh, I'll buy a Paragon War suit and I'll put it together for my Librarian Sisters of Battle. Or maybe I'll get to play around with some Contemptor Dreadnoughts for my Grey Knight army. Only time will tell. I do think that, as much as I love the Stormcast Eternals, I think that this is probably how they're going to remain, and if anything goes on with Warhammer Fantasy for me, it's going to be the Carriage and Overlords. I really, really like the Carriage and Overlords. And you know what else I really, really like? That's right, our Patreon. Over there, we have brand new miniatures every month. When you sign up, there's a welcome pack that includes Dawn of War-inspired terrain, all hosted by comics, games, and things. There's also Patreon-exclusive videos and weekly Discord hangouts. We also have merch. Link in the description. Are there any other armies I'm interested in? I mean, there's so many. Basically, I'm interested in all armies, but is there anything else where I'm like, I might actually collect it? Eh, probably not. This is my armies. I hope you guys enjoyed, and as always, thanks for watching.